Hi guys, Vipin here. Let's understand what inflation is, consumer pricing index and wholesale pricing index. Now, inflation is something that's been coming about in the news quite often. Uh, Government of India has projected that inflation is, is, is possibly the lowest uh, in the recent years. So what is inflation exactly? Now, inflation refers to prices of goods and services going up, but the value of money in fact going down. Which means, if I have 100 rupees today, what I can get with 100 rupees today is, let's say, about 10 units worth of different goods. But let's say, for example, if inflation were to happen and the price of these goods and services were to go up, what I can get with that 100 rupees is going to decrease. So that's what I mean by when I say the value of money actually decreases. Now, inflation also happens when there is more money in the economy. Now, what the producer does is, he is unable to cater to the demand of all the customers who want to buy his product. So what he does is, he increases the prices so that only a select few can actually buy this product. Now, why won't he sell more? Because it's too expensive to make more. So what he does is, increase the price so that only a few people are able to afford these products and services. Now, another thing that happens is, Printing money can also lead to inflation. Now that's very similar to the point where I made previously. That is, you have more money in the economy and because of more money, you will see a case of inflation there. Now the most uh, notorious example for printing money and inflation uh, being a result of printing money is something that happened in Zimbabwe. I don't have too much of time to talk about that. But Google about that, you will get a lot of information on what happened in Zimbabwe when it comes to the inflation crisis there. So is inflation a good thing or a bad thing? Now, that again is a very relative point of view. From our point of view, inflation is considered uh, to be a very bad thing. That is, we don't want it to go up because it's going to result in us spending more. But from the producer's point of view, inflation is going to result in a better quality goods and services. It's going to result in innovation. So how does that work? If I was a producer and I come across raw materials, the price of raw materials is going to go up. I would find ways in which I would reduce my manufacturing cost. And by trying to find ways in which I would reduce my manufacturing cost, I would result in creating innovative uh, manufacturing processes. I might be able to come out with better quality products and services. And all this has happened thanks to inflation. So inflation is able to create a competitive market. But remember, we cannot have inflation in the double digit margin because that's going to be bad for both producers and consumers as well. The ideal range for inflation is anywhere between say 3% to 5%, maybe 6%. So that's in fact, if it's going to be stable there, that would be the ideal thing for the rate for inflation. Now to measure inflation, we have two different uh, indices. The first one is consumer pricing index or CPI. The other one that you have is WPI, that is wholesale pricing index. Now I've given a list of components when it comes to uh, wholesale pricing index and the consumer pricing index. When it comes to CPI, the components are divided into two groups, that is you have rural and you have urban. Now they do this because consumers are scattered in two different environments, the rural environment and the urban environment. And rural market in India is bigger than the urban market. Although the per unit consumption or per person consumption, sorry, in rural India is very less. The number of people in rural India is a lot more than the number of people in urban India. That's why you see there is greater weightage given to the rural market than you have for the urban market. Now, if you look at it, each of the components that you come across there, like milk, vegetables, all that, they're given a particular amount of weightage. The greater the weightage there is, the more influence it has on the index. That is, if I come across something like housing, which has got a huge uh, weightage, that is in the rural market, you can see it's got around 22%. For something as high as that, that is able to influence the index more 
than something as small as say condiments and spices which just got around 2.33% as weightage. Now WPI is similar but you do not have it categorized to uh, rural market and urban market. WPI is more or less linked to the producer. Consumer point, uh, consumer pricing index on the other hand is linked to consumers. Now, why do we have two different indices? Now we have two different indices because the WPI is what is going to influence CPI. If producers come across changes in their input costs, that is, let's say for example, you come across the increase in the price of manufacturing paper. Now, when there is an increase in the price of manufacturing paper, stationary costs could go up. Prices of tobacco could also go up because cigarettes are in fact wrapped with paper. And this is how in fact the vendors are able to see an increase in cost from their side or the producers are able to see an increase in cost from their side and eventually it could affect us. Now I say it could affect us because not in all cases does the producer manage to increase the price each time he come across the input cost actually increasing. The producers usually have a threshold and if it crosses that threshold only then they manage to in fact increase the prices of the different products and services that they sell to us. Anyway guys, I hope you found my video interesting. Please visit my website, it's www.weaponmks.com. You will find a whole bunch of articles. I think I've written more than 200 articles related to economics, marketing, finance, uh, you name it. And anyway, uh, thank you for your time and do hit the subscribe button. See you guys.